Hello everyone and welcome to Europa Universalist 4. I'm Lord Forent here with another country guide, this time going over the wonderful nation of Portugal. So you basically you want to play a nation that's not a warmonger. Portugal is probably your only choice. Um, Portugal could quite happily go most of the game only fighting a handful of wars and basically just colonizing and trading their way to great power and tons of money. However, how fun would that be? Basically, EU4 is a map painting game. You should be conquering things. It's a lot more fun if you conquer things. The problem is, Portugal kinda sucks at warfare. They have one military bonus, infantry combat ability in their ideas. So let's just quick run over their ideas. They have trade efficiency, really great for trading nation, plus 25% colonial reigns. Right there to signal the Portuguese should be the first people to really colonize the new world and most of the rest of the world. You've got this wonderful idea here, Legacy of the Navigator. Morale hit when losing a ship minus 33 and ship disengagement chance 5%. This means your navy is going to be harder to defeat in battles and you're more likely to have ships not to die in battles. Which is good because you should have a small strong navy but you're not going to have the same scale of say the Spanish or even the English. Although not to say that you're going to be able to fight the English or anything because hint hint you're not the English Navy is overpowered. Uh, you've got 10% goods produce modifier. It's nice. It could be stronger. The problem is is Portugal is you just don't have a lot of land in Portugal itself which means all your growth is going to come outside. However it does go well with your lands and African stuff sometimes who have very good trade goods. I'm uh, pretty sure it stacks with trade company bonuses towards production. Global trade power plus 10% for the Feltoras. And you get plus 15% settler increase. Again, another colonial trade idea. wonder what they're indicating. Oh, wait. Trade. Then you've got merchants plus one. Again, trade. This one is kind of an oddity among the Portuguese tree. You get 15% to cheaper construction costs and yearly absolutism plus 0.5. It's a little odd for a nation, but the additional yearly absolutism is really nice, even though you're really are not going to be doing large conquests. Then you get that 10% infantry combat I mentioned and 10% port defense. The fort defense is actually in some ways just as useful as the infantry combat ability. As Portugal, you should have lots of isolated trading posts, and because they're going to be valuable, you should probably put forts in them. Obviously, where it's needed and where it's useful. And 10% uh, port defense will give you more time to get your navy there to defend them. And to end, you get plus 20 global tariffs. Again, build a colonial and trade empire. So, uh, we'll go down the Portuguese missions in a little bit. But suffice to say, they have a lot of them and they are really good. Mostly all associated with trade. So, first off, the first thing you should do day one as Portugal... I like Castile. Now, this is the case even if you want to conquer Castile because you're not going to be able to conquer Castile on your own. And in fact, your immediate threat is Morocco, who will happily declare war on you with their allies. And the odds of you actually beating Morocco as Portugal are, nice to say, slim. You really do need Castile. I've seen multiple games where Morocco and Portugal go to war, Castile doesn't help, or is in the civil war, and Morocco proceeds to stomp Portugal, take Ceuta, and usually Algarve, and then from there they've got a foothold, and they proceed to conquer Portugal in the next 20 or so years. So to avoid that, all that nonsense, ally Castile. Your other options, ally Aragon, try to use them to kill Castile. What was Castile has a really strong early game with their morale bonus, and even Aragon can't really overcome that since they don't have it. Other option is obviously France. You do start off with an alliance with England, which is nice, but England's going to get promptly stomped by France and then going to have their whole War of the Roses, so don't really expect them to do anything for you for like 20 years or more. There's also the fact that you've got a much smaller army, so getting favors with some of your allies uh, is going to take time. You're never going to have a massive army as Portugal, even if you do conquer wide they just i've played portugal a lot i really like portugal the problem is they just can't fight wars on the scale of all the other great powers they're so much more oriented towards making tons of money from trade it's an easier strategy 
and then using that money obviously to hire mercenaries and stuff and then they have a slightly better edge to fight Europeans but thankfully if you're allied to Castile and then to Spain they tend to stay as your ally because you're historical friends they tend to just happily defend you no one will really attack you you don't border anybody in Europe other than Castile and Morocco but they're not in Europe and uh, once you conquer Morocco secure this area especially if you give Castile any of Tlemcen's lands you basically don't have to worry about a European war for the rest of the game except to aid Castile which you can pretty much if you go in you can do um where is it um oh it hasn't registered um really there should be a way to say don't call me to arms oh here we go joining offensive wars duh basically make them so they can't call you to war that can totally make it easy for you never to have to fight a european war on the other hand you won't get favors yeah i found it once you get enough favors with castile uh, it's pretty easy to just do no offensive wars and never have to be bothered again. So, Portugal's missions. This is also going to talk into expansion. So, the big one for Portugal starting on is a competitive advantage. Well, Navy to 100% force limit. What you do, you get a claim on Tangiers. You want to take this reasonably early on. First off, it's in Morocco, which is going to necess necessitate the use of Castile, by and large, to win the war. You can do it without it, but... Morocco is actually a surprisingly tough nation to invade with most of their forts being on mountains, plus with three vassals. Uh, they can just beat you one-on-one. -on -one. You really need Castile. Ideally, you want Castile Argon. Uh, you can win with Castile, though. Hopefully not right before they plunge into the Spanish um, Civil War or any of their associated problems. And then uh, between the two of you, so long as you've got superior morale advantage, if you're going to try and do it early on, probably might want to focus military power. Uh, you got a military advantage, use it. You also got better units in general. So once you do that, it wants you to keep conquering things, gives you claims in the rest of these areas. It basically wants you to expand down and take most of the course, court, coast of Morocco. Uh, you probably want to take all of Morocco, to be honest. Uh, be aware, though, you're not going to be able to convert much of it because it's Sunni and that wonderful local missionary strength penalty makes it hard for you to convert stuff. Also, as Portugal, you do not have uh, any conversion strength from your ideas, unlike Castile. So it means that taking religious ideas at first as them is not necessarily the worst thing in the world. I wouldn't recommend it, but if you really want to wipe out Morocco and have a lot more development in this area rather than just taking a couple provinces and over time converting them religious ideas is going to be really handy be really handy um the other thing to do is you could abandon your core in suta and make it a trade company which then will get rid of some of your religious unrest and turn all of this into a trade company the only issue with that i find is that you really do need the development to hold on to colonial nations later on in the game so, outside of that, after you've done all this, there's only three to deal with Morocco, which means the rest of these are elsewhere. You've got wine monopolies, which is you basically need to be producing a lot of wine. And then once you do that, you get trading bonuses and arts and letters. Basically, these are just minor bonuses temporarily that will help you. There's nothing amazing in them, but they're nice to see. It's more of the colonial game that's more interesting. So it wants you to build a flagship, which you can do basically almost from start once you get up enough ducats. And then uh, if you still have your alliance with England, you can get a you can get some claims on Steel's land. If you're gonna kill Castile, this is the time to do it. Ally Argon, ally England, if you can ally France, use them all to wipe out Castile. You're not gonna be able to beat Castile one-on-one -on, -one on your own, so you need allies. Once you do that. If you've intervened and you've taken that, which is a lot of land, you can get a permanent claim on the rest of Iberia if you manage to conquer all of Iberia, which does include these islands. You can form the Lusitanian Empire and become an emperor. empire, which will make you super... Basically, you're going to be one of the largest nations in the game at that point. You're going to basically replace Spain, but you're going to be militarily weaker. Oh. 
There's positives and minuses to both strategies. This will probably engage you in more European wars. On the other hand, you'll have more development and be a lot stronger. Other than that, you've got missions. You've got beyond Cape Cote Jour, which basically requires you to have a colonist, which means you're going to be locked behind needing exploration or expansion ideas. You're going to want to do expansion expansion sec uh, third your third idea group after you do exploration you want the colonial reigns but more importantly you also want the explorers and conquistadors you want to get to the new world get a conquistador exploring the new world and start just in generally uh, using your ex your explorer to gain knowledge of the coast you want to get the caribbean trade node going you want to get a colonial nation there you want to try and dominate that you also want to try and get a colony going in brazil because some of your missions involve that if you can snag Colombia or uh, Rio de Plata as well, those are all really good ones. But your big goal really should be the Caribbean and then Brazil. So once you do that, it gives you settler chance. Um, this is just getting a colonist and discovering West Africa. By the way, I should point this out. Um, where's my actual fleet? You start off with an explorer, so you can actually start exploring the West African coast, getting closer to get that mission done. You're not really going to be able to get that far with that explorer, sadly. Uh, your range is just going to be too small. Um, if you're going for the Henry Navigator achievement, I did a guide on that a while back, so look that up. Um, it hasn't changed much. Obviously, you can probably figure out the changes, but basically you have to reach India by 1500. You're going to want to stack everything with range. And starting out with that explorer becomes handy because then you can invade West Africa early on. Um, after that, it wants you to colonize West Africa. In Guinea, you gain an ex another explorer. So you really should never have to hire an explorer early on. You should just be able to use your starting one in the sky to get a lot. Colonize the Caribbean. Here's where you want to do this. You get trade efficiency for 20 years, or the subjects do. Go westward, it wants you to keep exploring, you know, Brazil and everything gets you morale, envoys, trade power. Once you get Brazil going, you get Brazilian dominance, global trade tariffs. It wants you to settle settle in Central Africa, basically around the Congo, you get trade power. Once you get the Cape of Good Hope, so basically secure South Africa, which you should try and do anyway, because it's a really powerful one. It'll give you claims of Mozambique, and then it wants you to basically go and conquer the eastern coast of Africa like Portugal Portugal did historically. Um, you should be superior technology and troops at that point, so it shouldn't be that hard. Further down there, once you get Zandabar, once you get a lot of the uh, top of gold mine region, or in this case, the Zimbabwe and Butua gold mines, really nice. You could finance your whole empire off those gold mines if you do it properly. Uh, and then it wants you to get... The Horn of Africa, so go over there, down here into the Ethiopian region. Now, uh, once you get that, you get a push to Hormuz, and you actually can get a permanent claim, so you could invade them. The problem is they tend to own multiple provinces and have good allies, but if you can do it, not a bad province to take. And then it wants you to get to India, you get Dagama, and everything else. You get another explorer, a really good explorer. At this point, you can almost explore the world, or circumnavigate the globe. Um, which you should try and do if you can pull it off because it gets you a pretty nice bonus. And if you take Hormuz, like this one encourages you to start doing, uh, you can get a nice fortification there. Plus 25% local defensiveness. You put an edict on it. You put a level 8 fort. It's going to be pretty hard to take. It wants you to take out Oman, which if you do, you get trade power and defensiveness in Masquat. Nice. The only issue with that is uh, the trade routes are a little... Less than useful over there for Portugal. And jumping back up here, once you've done Brazil, I want you to promote the Bandeirantes. Um, basically, if you do that, this mission, which is trade on entire regions, uh, you get gold in Minas Gerais, and you get gold plus two produced for the rest of the game. So why is this useful? Because you're not going to be owning this province. It helps with your colonial nation. Now they will have gold, so they'll start building a treasure fleet and shipping it back to you, which is really nice. This one is interesting. This is established Jesuit mission. If you pull it off, you get yearly popple influence plus two for the rest of the game, which means you're going to be right up there with Castile and Florence 
for actually getting influence over the Pope, which means you can be Popple Controller, get all those bonuses for the rest of the game. It's quite strong. Uh, to do that, you have to assign them to the Jesuit Holy Order states in Brazil. So I'll go into that in a minute, but suffice to say, it's really useful. After that, once you get to Indonesia, it wants you to conquer Malabar, Ceylon, Bolsarat. Um, if you get control of the India super region and you have trade company, you get the event Casa da India. Pretty good event. I'll let you enjoy the surprise. And then it wants you to invade Burma, trade with China, and we have to discover it. A lot of the Portuguese ones are discover it, and then once you discover it, you get a claim, and if you conquer it. If you get to China, which you're going to do, um, the big thing is colonizing Indonesia, getting one takes a little bit of time. If you do that, you get a claim on Macau, but you also get local trade power bonus in Lisbon. And once you do all that, if you've got good relations with China, which is probably the Ming, but anyone else, you can actually buy Macau from them. You just have to have 15% more trade power. It's relatively easy to get. It gives you a nice little base. The downside is it makes the owner of China usually hate you, especially if they're the Ming. Uh, I've never had them attack me for it, but then again, I never was weak because I was allied with Spain, the world superpower at that time. Uh, the three mercantilism is just nice if you can get it, but it doesn't make up for being able to buy Macau. And then beyond that, you've got trade with Japan, and there's a chance that you can get a province in Japan, which will be a stepping stone to invading and conquering Japan, which if you can, you should do because they're pretty isolated, tend not to have really good allies. So that is Portugal in a nutshell. So let's go over some of the other interesting bonuses for Portugal. Um, let's first get 100 gold here. Uh, not going to get me that much. Uh, wine, that should do it. Portugal actually has a couple wine provinces, which is nice. Uh, we've got to go a day or two forward till this can set up. So, um, I need to be able to build a flagship. Da -da -da -da. Come on, game. Why is it not letting me build the flagship? Oh, I don't have enough navies. That's annoying. Okay, well, I will um, just quick build some ships, to be honest. Um, uh, while we do that, we'll look at some of their other stuff. So, Portugal, in the whole um, uh, Golden Century update for the Iberia region, gained the Council of the Indies, which is quite nice. Uh, it's a nice little reform, gives you global tariffs plus 20 and the global and trade fleet income plus 20. So that 20 stacks nicely with their 20 from global trade tariffs from their ambition. If you get trade ideas, it gets even higher, all the bonuses you'll get. Basically, you're going to want to take trade ideas as Portugal at some point. So uh, we've got 200 days here until this is done. So let's continue the other stuff. Uh, it's your standard monarchy tree. Otherwise, your feudal nobility, you should probably either... I would recommend strengthening noble privileges for the manpower, because Portugal's manpower pool is honestly quite weak. It's kind of sad. Um, they also don't have enough land if you just own Portugal for the tax to make a huge difference. Your vast majority of your money is going to come from trade. You're like England and the Netherlands, but even more trade-oriented with a weaker rest of your government as well. Um, you definitely want Council of the Indies if you can get it. It does require to have a colonist, but by the time you get there, you should already be colonizing anyway. Recommend the admin policy. It's usually better than the other two. Um, absolutism. I'm the state. You want definitely more of that. Unless you're not going to put things into states, you don't ever want the territory reform. Um, okay, the fleet should be built now, so we can go over that. Although I will have to... Really give privileges to these guys. Oh wait, they don't have any? We may have to... I don't think we can actually take a loan. <laughs> I may have to just mothball everything until I get that working. So, um, give me half a moment here. So, um, that's basically your big focuses as them. They're a lot trade power oriented. You want to trade, you want to trade it a lot as fast as you can, and as much as you can. And basically at all times you want to be trading. They start off with um, 
uh, Pedro, it's a regency, which lasts for a year. And then you get a seven monarch on the throne. He's not great, um, but he's definitely better than what Castile has. <laughs> zero, 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 Enrique. We all hate him. Um, uh, usually Portugal tends to get good heirs. Uh, really, you want heirs with a lot of naval stuff because you want to keep good naval um, tech. Be ahead in that. Now let's look at the flagship. So Portugal has some really nice ones. They start off with the Portuguese Navigators, plus 100 fleet exploration range. This is nice. Uh, it's good early on, obviously less useful as the game progresses. The issue I find with this is although you can explore it, you can't colonize it, which means the exploring is less useful. However, they do have the Bombardiers. Naval fleet barrage cost minus 40. This is really good. You're going to be fighting a lot of naval invasions and wars. To be able to barrage for instead of 50 for 40% cheaper, really good. Most people don't remember that you can use fleets to barrage forts once you're sieging them. Useful. Then you've got trade route map plus trade power in fleet plus two. Um, this is super powerful. Um, basically, you almost don't want a heavy ship um, flagship. You almost want a uh, light ship flagship. I would still go for the heavy just... For some combat ability but you do that you build the whole trade fleet in general probably by giving a privilege to your burgers to make your trade fleet cheaper hint hint uh you can basically start generating a massive amount of trade power from your fleet which you should probably park in the Sevilla trade node uh this one's nice movement speed on and off of ships negative combat penalty while landing negative two uh it doesn't actually say that but when you read the little description it does uh, this will help with you invading islands like Caribbean ones or Japan, anything in Indonesia. It's quite useful. You should probably take, I would recommend you take the bottom three rather than the navigators, unless you're so desperate about exploring early on. Um, these are stronger. Trade power, movement, and barrage, all really powerful. The issue is if you're using... Uh, your fleet for barraging and combat, you're not going to get the full benefit from trade power. This is more of a at peace benefit, but it's still really good. Whoops, I didn't actually mean to build that. <laughs> oh well. And outside of that, uh, you've got a pretty easy as Portugal. They're a relatively simple nation. They're definitely one of the beginning nations to you for. The hardest thing you're going to probably experience is Portugal is the initial issue with Morocco. Suta down here is Sunni and Moroccan and really wants to revolt. You can get over it by raising autonomy. You can also um, do like uh, de jure feudal law to reduce unrest, or you can try and convert it with a missionary and missionary strength. But that brings us to another topic the state interactions. Just like steel portugal has holy orders so for 50 of each type of the monarch points you can get one base something in your land uh it's less useful on you than uh castile who has multiple states but you can apply it to your colonies which is how you can get that mission where you have to give land to um uh, the jesuits um takes a long time to get it. Seven states, though, in Brazil. Just fair warning. You're going to spend most of the game just getting Brazil as Portugal. Get the Caribbean. Focus on Brazil. If you can, beat the Castilians to invading the Inca and Aztec and the Maya for the money. But you're going to spend most of your time colonizing Brazil. The sad fact of the matter is, outside of your global settler increase, you don't have any other bonuses to colonizing, unlike uh, Castile does and Spain. It's going to take you... You're going to be a slower colonizer, but you get there early. So um, your first idea as Portugal, if you don't do religious, should be exploration. Your next should be expansion. Your third probably should be a military, um, third or fourth. And then you probably should go for trade just to start reaping tons of money. Outside of that, it kind of goes wherever you want. Um, maritime ideas aren't necessarily the worst on portugal um they're one of the few nations that you might actually consider taking it on but it's still there's better ideas the problem is naval warfare in this game is bad basically build heavy ships for your military build some transports to get your troops around you're gonna have a small army so you're gonna be ferrying troops all over the world to win wars and then whatever remaining force limit you have which is small as portugal you're gonna want to put into trade fleets
Um, so the other thing to realize is you're going to want to probably put a shipyard or a grand shipyard in all of your Portuguese provinces in Europe. That will give you like 10 to 20 more naval force limit, uh, which you're going to need because you don't actually have any major bonuses towards a larger naval force limit, which is why I mentioned maritime, the plus 50 naval force to be half decently useful. Um, if you conquer Morocco, that all of the Moroccan region, that alleviates your problem quite a bit because then you've got more coasts, some more ports, some more shipyards. Um, my strategy is honestly take religious, conquer Morocco, then colonize. Uh, it does delay your colonialization a bit, um, but not in a really painful fashion, I found. And the security of owning Moroccan development outweighs the early colonizing, I find. Uh, you should, unlike... All the Europeans, you should definitely probably be the one to get colonialism. Uh, all you have to do is quest for the new world, which you're going to get from taking exploration ideas. And uh, if you don't get it, you're going to be also probably the first nation with the colonial nation, which means you'll get it soon after. The only other people who really be realistically competing with you are England and Castile. Castile falls behind in tech early on, and England tends to as well. Basically, the French king and the Portuguese king are outside of the major nations in Western Europe. They're the better two, even though this guy's a 10 and this guy's only a 7. It's just a comedy of issues. Um, let's see, anything else important? Uh, you should definitely keep an eye on your popal stuff. If you go religious ideas, you're going to get a lot of popal influence. Uh, sanction the commercial monopoly, get mercantilism is really useful. Um, constantly handing out these, you know, monopolies will also get you more. You're probably going to want to keep handing out these monopolies for some time because you want that as high as you can get so that when trade comes, you can compete. Another benefit of invading Tangiers is it gives you another center of trade. You've got two in your lands, but Castile has five in their starting lands and is only going to pick up more if you let them invade this region. The irony is your best ally, Castile, and then Spain, are also your biggest rivals in some ways. Uh, in terms of alliances, though, if you can keep the Castilian alliance, you're great. If you can also keep the English alliance, no one's going to touch you, is the sheer reality of the matter. Unless those two start fighting each other, which can happen, everyone's going to ignore you. Outside of that, though, uh, allying the Pope and maybe France are really only other options. Everybody else is going to kind of look at you and going, you're way too far away. So the odds of you becoming, say, Holy Roman Emperor, pretty slim, unless you somehow inherit England or you invade your way into Italy. But you're Portugal. You're a peaceful trading nation that can make tons of money. It's a lot. It's a very different EU4 game as Portugal. The issue is the initial wars with Morocco, the fact that starting out, you're honestly kind of broke like you saw what happened when i raised to my fleet limit all of a sudden you're losing money the start is rough the biggest thing i found to alleviate that is to get uh affiliate down here because it's got a gold mine until you get uh colonial nation going this is all your best source of income unless you kill spain in which case developing la mancha for the gold is worth it as well so Hopefully that's all you guys need to know. Um, you don't have any really unique um, events or missions as Portugal that are game changing. You'll get this East Indian trade route. You should definitely do the, um, it doesn't show up here, but form East India Company for the additional merchant. Um, just make sure you set up your trade stuff right. Everything goes to Sevilla, but then it can also flow on to Valencia and Genoa. So um, getting a lot of trade power in this node is key. Don't forget that there are edicts that can boost your uh, local trade power. The reason I mention this is Portugal doesn't have a ton of states, so especially this one, you're, because it's your capital state, your maintenance is already low. So if you put protect trade on it, it doesn't actually increase your maintenance too heavily. And because of that, it will also boost your trade power considerably as well. So this is the one place pretty much in the game other than maybe London or the Dutch capital that leaving this edict on for most of the game is a solid strategy just you saw it went up by 0.3 later on the gain 
in terms of money is going to be even greater. Um, when the Renaissance spawns, though, it may be worth you putting on the development and getting Lisbon developed. You want to get to 25, uh, 30 development in Lisbon as soon as possible because if you've got the Splendor bonuses enabled, they get Portuguese colonial growth. This is what makes Portugal the strongest early game colonizer, plus 50 global settler increase. The sad fact is by the time you get it, you only have like 30 years to use it. So you're only going to get maybe two, maybe three colonies done. It's really kind of sad. It doesn't last longer. Um, if you're lucky, Protestantism takes longer to spawn and then you get even more time. You really don't have long to use it though, but it basically means you can colonize Africa and Guinea, the Guinea region really fast. You should snag the Guinea trades, try to get to South Africa. Basically as Portugal, you should go around cherry picking provinces for their trade. Basically you want centers of trade and then outside of that you want good trade goods. So um, in Africa that's like slaves, ivory. Um, in Indonesia you want spices and stuff. You basically want to control as much of the trade of the world as possible. You're going to, unlike a lot of nations, um, let's see, where is that? You're going to want to spend a lot of time looking at the ledger for trade, specifically like the strategic goods. Um, you actually are going to get a fair amount of these bonuses. So trying to figure out where these are coming and how close you are is worth it. Some of them are better than others. Obviously, you don't really need the mercenary maintenance cheaper, but it's not bad. Um, you want to try and get stuff like inflation reduction, which you can get if you, you know, have a large presence in India. Paper is really useful. Development costs, tropical, this is really good for you. And obviously, settler increase for cotton is handy if you can pull it off. Um, outside of that, Remember the burgers, I can't show it to you here, but first off, you should give them private trade fleets. Um, once you get a colonist, there is basically a privilege that you can get extra. Um, at the cost of tariffs, I believe, you get extra settler increase. We're turning it on early and then turning it off later once you get past, um, once you get some colonial nations rolling, it's good. Uh, this enforced interfaith dialogue, tolerance of heathens and heretics. If you take this early on, um, it basically will get rid of your problem with unrest in Morocco, uh, the Moroccan provinces, because the unrest from be them being Sunni goes down to basically zero if you got good legitimacy, and you should as Portugal. Portugal is a very stable nation to play. You don't really have to worry about it. You're going to stay Catholic. You get the Catholic bonuses, you're going to be tolerant. If you really want to do it, you go humanist. You get the additional tolerance of heretics and heathens. And basically, you sit around for the rest of the game, tolerating everybody, trading with everybody, and being peaceful. If this game had like a resource trading system where you could trade resources to other countries, Portugal would be one of the best ones. Since it doesn't, the only thing you can get is tons of gold. And uh, that, in fact, is what Portugal specializes in. So enjoy it. Have fun and uh, trade your way around the world. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please do like, subscribe, and check out my other country guides. I'm currently updating most of my pre-emperor update ones. I've done France, England, Castile, um, Bohemia, and Austria, and I'm working my way through a lot of the popular ones. So probably Ottomans, Poland, Russia are probably the next one. order. If you have any recommendations for guides, please let me know. And obviously any feedback about uh, content, even the way I talk, is always useful. And I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.